Let's pray. We're going to get in the word. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for what your son did on this day as he stepped out of that tomb. Father, we thank you that we do serve a risen Savior. We do serve a risen Savior. He's alive and well, seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us, the saints. And Father, we thank you that we've been seated there together with him. And right now, Lord, we thank you as we get into your word that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to receive everything that you have for us today. Lord, as the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding would be flooded with light so we would know what is the hope of your calling. Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing and everything that's yet to come. We thank you for it and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's pick up here. You know, this is pretty standard text for, the, uh, uh, for an Easter Sunday, for a Resurrection Sunday. But uh, let's look here in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. He said, Now after the Sabbath was the first day of the, uh, of the week, began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow and the guards shook for fear of him and they became like dead men. And the angel of the Lord answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said. I mean, you know, Jesus said it, that settles it, right? He goes, just remember what he said. He is not here, he's risen, right? Just like he said. And he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and then go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Praise the Lord. And so then in verse uh, uh, nine, he says, and then as they went their way to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. Isn't this interesting? The first word that came out of Jesus' mouth after risen, being raised from the dead was instruction to have other people rejoice. Come on, it wasn't saying, look at me, look what God has done. Come on, it wasn't saying, hey, you guys want to see the holes in my hands and the holes in my feet? Hey, you want to see this, this thing on my side here? Do you want to see where the crown of thorns was? No, he just said rejoice. Come on, how many know that is what Jesus does? He just brings joy into the atmosphere. No matter what you're going through, he just said, rejoice, praise the Lord. And so they came and they uh, uh, held him by the feet and they worshiped him. And so this was not a day of sorrow for the church because we don't serve a cross Jesus anymore. Come on, we serve a risen Jesus. He's not on the cross anymore. We don't serve a grave Jesus, we serve a risen Jesus. He's not in the grave anymore. Come on, he is seated at the right hand of God. He's the resurrected, the full of life, the the full of light, the victorious, the triumphant, the highly exalted Jesus. Come on, the name that's above every name. Come on, this is a day of victory. This is a day of triumph. This is a day of rejoicing for the church and it's a day of rejoicing for Jesus and being that we are the body of Christ, it's a day for rejoicing for us too. Come on, we're identified with that Jesus. Come on, a lot of people, they like to have Jesus on a cross hanging around their neck. It's okay to remember that, but we know he's not there. Come on, don't think that your Jesus is dead. Your Jesus is alive and well. Your Jesus is breathing life into you. Come on, we're identified with that Jesus. You know, on the way to the cross, Jesus had disciples, but when he came out of the cross and walked out of the tomb, now he had brothers. Come on, he opened up the family of God. He said, now you're no longer slaves, but now you're citizens. Come on, you're citizens, you're heirs of God and you're joint heirs with Jesus Christ and you are now children of God. Come on, it's not something that you're trying to be, it's something who you are right now. We just be it, come on, we be it. Come on, you were born into the family naturally, you were born into some family, you didn't have to try to earn a name, you didn't try to have to earn something, you just had that name. But now when you've been born again, you've been born into the family of God, you get his name on you. Come on, Jesus lives in you. Praise the Lord. Go over to Luke in chapter uh, 24. This is Luke's account, same account, but he just said something that just, uh, it really piques my interest every time I read this. In Luke chapter 24, Hallelujah. You're still glad that you came? I'm still glad that you came. Praise the Lord. We'll see how you're doing in 15 minutes. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 4, he said, And it happened as they, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, they bowed their faces to the earth, and they said to him, Why do you seek for the living among the dead? Well, I love that the angels added this. <laughs> 
or Luke's account added this and said, look, why are you looking for something living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember what he said to you when he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. So there's a lot of people today, you know, they're looking for living things among the dead. But you know, your full fulfillment is going to come from being in Christ. It's going to come from finding your place in Christ. You know, you've heard the song about looking for love in all the wrong places, right? I mean, there, there's people every day, they're looking for love. They're looking for fulfillment. They're looking for something. But really what they're looking for is the power of God. They're looking for the life of God and the light of God and purpose that they have not found anywhere else. And they've tried to fulfill it in all these other things. Maybe it's material things or maybe it's been people. And you just keep relying on people and people and people. But people will fail you every time. But when you put your your trust and your faith in Jesus, come on, he will not fail you. He will never fail you. He's never failed. He is always faithful. Just like that video said, even when we're faithful, faithless, he remains faithful. Come on, you can't talk him out of his faithfulness. He's always faithful. He's always faithful. Sinclair Ferguson said this, he said, Jesus undid everything that Adam did. And he did everything that Adam failed to do. Do you know when Jesus came and he stepped out of the tomb, he, he conquered death, he conquered hell, he conquered the power of sin over you, and now he said, look, I'm gonna put you right back in the right standing the way that Adam was before he had fallen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, you don't have to come to him with a sense of guilt or a sense of shame. You come to him boldly as you ought to come. Come on, we're a part of the new creation in Christ. We're a part of that. He has totally recreated us. The, the Apostle Paul said this in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I want you to see this. I'm not going to preach too long this morning, but uh, it's just I, I, I spend more time looking at what the Apostle Paul said uh, because he just had a tremendous revelation of who he was in Christ. I like how Pastor Mark says this. If you don't know who Pastor Mark is, Pastor Mark is our pastor, Pastor Mark Hankins out of Louisiana. But he, he said, uh, he goes, if you don't think you look good in Christ, you just haven't seen Christ lately. Come on, Jesus is looking pretty good. Come on, when you start to see yourself in Christ, when you start to renew, you, renew your mind of who you are in Christ, come on, the old man passes away. All those old things that used to tempt you, all those old things that you used to do, all of a sudden it's not even a, a hindrance to you anymore. You just realize who you are in Christ and you walk out in the fullness of that. Praise the Lord. Look at what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. And a life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, the Apostle Paul, he didn't really ever uh, uh, identify himself with anybody else except for Jesus. Come on, we, we as humans, we identify ourselves with our family. We identify ourselves with our parents, right? We identify ourselves with our location. We identify ourselves with all these other things. The Apostle Paul said, look, I don't count any of that anymore. He goes, I count that all as dung that I would just gain Christ. Come on, can we just see that we've got some room to grow in this a little bit? Yeah. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe you have arrived at who you are in Christ. Maybe you realize that that day over 2,000 years ago, you hung on the cross with Jesus, but I'm still catching up to you, so help me this morning. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Come on, I have been crucified with Christ. The Amplified Bible says it like this. I've been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. The Passion Translation says this. It says, my old identity has been co-crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails that his cross crucified me, uh, 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 for the nails of his cross crucified me with him, and now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. Glory to God. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. Come on, everything that is in Jesus. He's saying, I'm not trying to hold anything back from you. I am pouring this all into you right now. Come on, I'm not, I'm not trying to hold anything back. The, the Message Bible said this. He said, I've identified myself completely with him. <laughs> 
Indeed, I've been crucified with Christ, that my ego is no longer central. It's no longer important that I would appear righteous before you or have your good opinion, for I'm no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life that you see me living, it's not mine, but it's lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I'm not going to go back on that. Come on, the Apostle Paul had a tremendous revelation of who he was in Christ. People would come to him and say, how, how, Paul? You weren't even there that day that Jesus hung on the cross. You weren't even there that day when he stepped out of the tomb. How could you say that you were crucified with him? Don't you know that's just crazy for you to say something like that? He just says, look, it is a revelation from God that he appeared to me on the road to Damascus and he had shared some things with me. The, the, Pastor Mark likes to say it like this. The gospels give you a picture of what people saw. But when you look at the apostle Paul's epistles, you see, uh, that was a pretty tongue twist right there the apostles paul's epistles you see uh in x-ray so you start to see yourself of who you are in christ it's not just a history event any longer now you see yourself how you placed in this story and what happened when jesus hung on that cross that you hung on that cross with him the apostle paul said this in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 he said therefore if anyone be in christ how many is in anyone here this morning come on all right, so we have a few aliens, but we have a lot of anyone's, right? If anyone be in Christ, come on, there is no exception here. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what, how you talk. It doesn't matter what financial status you have. Come on, it doesn't matter if you have hair or not. It doesn't matter if you're skinny or fat. It doesn't matter. If anyone is in Christ, come on, he is a brand new creation. The old things have passed away. Come on, when Jesus passed away on that cross, when he died on that cross and said, it is finished, your old man died on that cross with him. All those old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You think about the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. The apostle Paul had a lot to say about the power that was used. He said, I just want to know the power that was used in this resurrection from the dead. Well, he was not a brand new believer saying these kinds of things. This was after 30 years of being in ministry. He just, I, I, I want to know him. And I want to know the power. Come on, church, this is not something that we should just talk about one day a year. Come on, Easter is not the only day that we should talk about the power of God. You ought to wake up and say, God, what do you want to do today? Come on, I'm going to plug myself into that outlet and see what God wants to do with me. I'm going to build myself up in my most holy faith. I'm going to pray. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout. I'm going to sing unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, I'm going to do something that connects me to that power source. Come on, you know, in this room, there's outlets all over the room, right? But you know, that outlet is no good until you plug something into it. Yeah. Come on, the, the, the power is right here, yeah. right? Romans chapter one, verse 16, he said, all the power of God is in the gospel. Yeah. He said, you just get in the gospel a little bit. You know, some people just say, well, I just, I wish, I wish I had some more power. I wish I just had some more power. What you really need is just more gospel. Yeah. Come on, you just need some more gospel. You need to know who you are in Christ and whose you are yeah. in Christ. Go over to Colossians chapter two. Colossians chapter 2 and uh, verse 13. You know, there were some things that were happening while Jesus was in the grave. He wasn't just sleeping. Come on, he wasn't just dead. As, uh, you know, I like that video. It said, uh, if you didn't notice, I was busy for just a few days, but I, I got back to you. Uh, come on, he had some things going on. Yeah. And uh, praise the Lord. Now look here in verse uh, 12. He said, you were buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Verse 13, he says, and you. Come on, so he talked about Jesus a little bit here, but then he says, and you. Even in your deadness, in your trespasses, in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made you alive together with him. Come on, when Jesus was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. Come on, when Jesus walked out victorious, you walked out victorious, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Now look at verse 14. Having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. The New Living Translation in verse 14 says that he canceled the record. 
of the charges that were against us. Well, some of y'all right now, you could really roll your Rolodex back in your head and think about some of the things. You say, I don't, how could God ever accept me? How could God ever even think good thoughts about me? Because he knows what I did on such and such a day and such and such a year. Some of y'all, you're holding on to things that happened 50 years ago. Come on, it's time to let that go. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Come on, when you realize that all of these things that were against you, all of your sins, all of your transgressions, all of these trespasses, he's canceled the record of those charges against you. He took it away. Come on. Those nails as they nailed his hands into that cross. Come on, your sin was nailed there with him. Your lack was nailed there with him. Come on, the family issue was nailed there with him. All these other things were nailed there with him. Every sin was forgiven. The Message Bible says, think of it. All sins were forgiven. The, sa- the slate has been wiped clean. That old arrest warrant was canceled and it was nailed to Christ's cross. And he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in a universe of their sham authority. Come on, just call them out. Call them out. It's a sham authority. It's not real authority. It's a sham authority at the cross. And he marched them naked through the streets. Come on, one of my favorite days of the year, barring Christmas and Easter, is Thanksgiving. And I think about Thanksgiving because I love the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Come on, how many of y'all just watch that every time? Come on, it's not every day you can see a hundred foot Snoopy floating through the air. Come on. It's not every day that you can see a Broadway show being performed in front of Macy's. It's just not every day, right? It's not every day that you see Jimmy Fallon and Roots playing with Sesame Street on a big flow. It's not every day. Trust me, I watch it, and then I rewatch it, and then I study it, and then I watch it again like six months later. Praise the Lord, just to keep myself fresh on what happened that year. Come on, some of y'all are into other nerdy things. Don't fault me for being nerdy about Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. But, you know, in the beginning of the parade, as they're getting ready to start, there is a grand master of the parade. Usually he's got some kind of a staff and a big old hat on, right? And they cut this, this, this ribbon, and they start just marching through the streets. Come on, the grand master is leading the victory march. Now, whether Snoopy's following or somebody else, you know, who cares? But here, just imagine for a moment that this day in downtown eternity, Hallelujah. come on, Just once upon a time. Come on, we love fairy tales. Once upon a time. This was once upon a time. Come on, Jesus, the grand master of this eternal parade, he stripped every tyrant of their authority. He stripped every power and principality that could be against you. Come on, sickness and disease and sorrow and fear and grief and and lack and all these other things that try to tag themselves to you. He said, look, I have opened up today with a victory parade and I'm gonna march through downtown eternity. Don't you see? I've beaten hell. I've beaten death. I've beaten the grave. I've beaten the power of sin. I've beaten lack. I've beaten sorrow. I've beaten all those things so that you don't have to be uh, uh, living in those things any longer. Come on, he marched them through the streets naked. As my wife would say, naked. And we all know that that is the wrong way to say. (laughs) Come on, what a demonstration. Come on, some people just think, well, Jesus was just dead there in that tomb. No, he conquered everything that needed to be conquered. When he stripped away all that authority, he stripped it away and he said, look, I'm going to put you on an open display of how little power you have now. Come on, when God raised Jesus from the dead, when God raised him from the dead, Jesus stepped out of the tomb as the absolute master over death and all of its phases, over hell and all of its hosts, over Satan and all of his works. Come on, he didn't step out and say, man, that was a heck of a journey. Come on, he stepped out, his shoulders back. He said, I've got all authority in my hands. Come on, Jesus, he was the first of a redeemed, restored, victorious humanity that would follow. You can say it like this. Everything that God wanted to put in humans, he put in Jesus. And he said, now this new creation of who you are in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he goes, all of those things that were in him are now in you. Come on, you are a new creature in Christ. You've been molded and 
and shaped after the risen Jesus, the victorious Jesus. Come on, when he steps out of the tomb, he's the firstborn, the archetype, the master of the pattern that God put into Christ, everything he wanted the new creation to be. The power that God used. You think about this. Come on, all the power that God used uh, uh, to display uh, uh, raising Jesus from the dead. It was not just raising him from physical death. Come on, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he defeated death in all of its phases. Come on, he undid that everything that Satan did in Adam and now Jesus is the last Adam. Come on, somebody. He's the last Adam. Go just a couple of pages forward to Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter three. I've kind of referenced this already, but I just want you to see this in, uh, uh, in your Bible. But Philippians chapter three and verse nine. And I say, you know, pastor, that's all well and good, but you just don't understand the things that I've done. You know what? I might not, but I know someone who does. Come on, he was tempted in all forms and phases, just like we were, but without sin. Come on, he can relate with you. Jesus can relate with you. In Philippians chapter three and verse nine, he said, and being found in him, this is the apostle Paul talking, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that's which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith that I would know him. Come on, if there's anything that you come away with today, just say, I just want to know him. Come on, you might have had a relationship with somebody, but you know, relationships can get even more intimate than what you've ever experienced. I mean, you might have just known about him. Come on, a lot of people, they know about Elvis, but they don't really know him. And I think the day's a little too late to actually know him. Right? Some of you, you probably think he's still alive. Praise the Lord. Jesus is alive. Right? Jesus is alive. Come on, you can get to know him. You can know him closer and more intimately and more deeply. You can know, like he said here, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. But if you want to talk about sufferings, fine. But you also got to talk about the resurrection. Come on, you just can't stay there and suffering all the time because Jesus ain't suffering no more. You have been raised together with the risen Jesus. So you don't have to just stay in a place of suffering, but you can experience the same sufferings. You can even be conformed to his death. The apostle Paul said, if by any means I may attain resurrection from the dead. And he just, he clues you in here and he says, look, it's not that I've already got there. He goes, I'm not already perfected. I've not attained this. He goes, but I press on. In verse 11, he said, I press on that I would lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself as to apprehend it, but one thing I do. Come on, can you say one thing? thing. Come on, this is one thing that you can do. If the Apostle Paul can do it, in verse, uh, uh, I don't know where they are back there. Verse 13, he said, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on, all those things that have been nailed to the cross, All the failures, all the sin, all the trespasses, all the things that you said, man, I don't know how God could ever count me in any longer. I don't know how this could ever work. Come on, you just forget those things. Forget it. Forget it. Forget the things that are behind. And press toward the goal for which the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In the the Amplified Bible, he said this in, in verse 10. He said, for my determined purpose is this that I would know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and I may also so share in his sufferings be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even into his death in the hope that if possible, I may attain spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out. A lot of you just been playing around the pig pen. You know, you've just been playing around in the mud. You've been playing around in all this stuff that has just kept you down. But really, when you think about what Jesus has done, he has borne your sin. Born means that he has lifted it off of you. He's lifted it off and he's carried it to a faraway place. And so that this power, this resurrection power, it lifts you out from among the dead. Even while in the body. Come on, even while in the body. And so what happened in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ, Paul said it like this. We were there when he was crucified. 
We were there when he was hung on that cross. We were there when he was buried. We were there when he stepped out of the tomb. We were there with him. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who's alive in me. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, he said, The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. Come on, this is this body that you put clothes on. This is this body that has skin on. It is this body that his spirit is breathing life into you. When you need to realize you're not who you used to be. You're not. So quit looking at, uh, for yourself among the dead. Well, a lot of people just, well, I want to go back and I want to just see, I want to see if it's the same way. Yeah, it's still the same way. The same losers are out there. Praise the Lord. Do you want to go out there and be with the losers? Go ahead and be with the losers. Praise the Lord. Come on, it's still going to look the same. It's still going to smell the same. It's still going to taste the same. No matter what your fix is that you are trying to find life in, it's the same exact way out there. Come on, but Jesus, but Jesus, come on, he is alive. And he will fulfill all those things that you are looking for. He will fill you with the fullness of himself. You are raised to life in Christ. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is working on the inside of you. Come on, when I was in a hospital just about a year ago or so, I had some issues with my back and I held on to this verse with dear life. I mean, the Bible says to hold fast to your confession of faith. Really, it's saying hold on to it and hold on to it for dear life. Because if you don't hold on to it, you're going to die. Come on. And I looked at that verse. If it's still up there. No. Well, it's back there. So you can turn around and see it. But in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, he said that he will also give life to your mortal body. Those two words, will also, I just saw myself in Jesus. The same spirit that raised him from the dead will also give life to this mortal body. Come on, will also, will also. He'll also give life to my mortal body. Hallelujah. He'll also give life to my mortal body. Just go one page forward or back to Romans chapter six and I'll end with this. Romans chapter six and verse four. Sharing, or therefore, you are buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead, the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that there should no longer, we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been set free from sin. I want you to hear this in, the, in the, the Passion Translation. He says this, he said, sharing in his death by our baptisms mean that we were co-buried and entombed with him. So that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him and we've been co-resurrected with him so that we could be empowered to walk in the freshness of new life. For since we are permanently grafted into him, to experience a death like his, we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection like his and the new life that it imparts. He says in verse six, he said, could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? For we are co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we could continue to live one moment longer. Uh, 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 we, we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. Obviously, a dead person is incapable of sinning. Come on. Come on, that old man has been crucified with Christ. All things have been made new. <clears throat> and we were co-crucified with the anointed one, and we know that we will also share in the fullness of his life. And we know that since the anointed one has been raised from the dead, he dies no more. His resurrection life has vanquished death and its power over him is finished. For by his sacrifice, he died to sin's power once and for all. But now he lives continuously for the father's pleasure. Verse 11, he says, so let it be the same with you. When all these things, we can think about everything that Jesus experiences right now. But you need to realize you were there with him. You were crucified with him. You were buried with him. You walked out victorious with him. Now you're seated together with him. Yeah. Amen. Said, let it be the same way with you. 
Since you're joined with him, you must continually view yourselves as dead and unresponsive to sin's appeal while living daily for God's pleasure in union with the anointed one. You know, I, I love this as I was thinking about being united with him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, he says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. But if you have asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you are one together with him. Come on, you are one in the same with Jesus. We talked about a little bit last week that when you walk into the presence of God, when you walk into the holiest place, when you're worshiping him, that the Lord, uh, God, he just smells Jesus all over you. He sees you washed in the precious blood of Jesus. He sees you redeemed and victorious. He doesn't see your old man. As a matter of fact, he said, I have taken your sins as far as the east is from the west, and I have chosen not to remember them and hold them against you. Come on, all those things that were contrary to you, he nailed them to the cross. They were not taken off the cross when Jesus was taken off the cross. They were not put in the grave when he was put in the grave. Come on, they were not raised together with him when he was raised together. They were dead and at the cross. Come on, they no longer have authority over you. Come on, it's time to start walking in this newness. It's time to start walking in who you are in Christ. Come on, there's, there's so much power that's on the inside of you. There's so much a, 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 a anointing. The same spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead is the one that lives in you. Do you know the, the, the spirit of God doesn't go places that is unrighteous? Come on, he's made you 100% righteous. Come on, there's no darkness in him. He's just full of light. He's just full of light. Come on, that's the Jesus that we serve. That is the Jesus that we serve. He's alive and he's well, and we're alive together with him. Praise the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment? Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word today. And we thank you, Lord. It's by your word that we've been changed. It's by your word. Your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides even between the spirit and the soul of a person. And so, God, I thank you that uh, as we've received this word, we see what Jesus has done. But we also see where we are now. And we thank you, Lord, that we are risen together with you. We were buried together with you. We were crucified together with you. But now we are sons and we are daughters of God. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We've been seated together in heavenly places, <laughs> together with Jesus. And Father, we thank you for that rightful position. We thank you, Lord, that as we leave this place, God, that we can come boldly before your throne. We can come boldly before your throne because we know who we are and we know what your son has done. That precious blood made a way so that we could come in and have entrance into the holiest place. Now just for a moment, you know, before uh, uh, we receive the elements of communion, I just want to make sure everybody knows where their eternal home is here. Jesus said some very bold things when he walked on this earth. He said, I am the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except by me. If you've never had a relationship with God, you've never had a relationship with Jesus, today's your day. There's no, there's no reason to just wait and say, well, I'm going to make that decision at the last moment. I'm going to see about that. I'll do this when I'm ready. No, today is a great day to do it. Come on, Jesus is not looking for you to be perfect. He's just looking for you to say, I need him. If that's you here this morning, you say, you know what, Pastor, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, but I need to. I need to. I need to, just like the Apostle Paul said, I need to have a, a revelation of this power and this uh, uh, authority and this anointing that comes from him. Very simply, I just want to know him. If that's you, just slip your hand up to heaven and just say, I just need to know him. I just need to know him. If there's anybody in this place that says, I don't have a relationship with God. If you're here and you say, you know what, I've been far from God for a long time, but I just, it, today's my day that I need to just make things right with heaven, make things right with my Savior, and come back home. If that's you, slip your hand up. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for each and every one in this place. I thank you, Lord, as the Apostle Paul did pray, that, that, that you would reveal things to us. You would show us things. You'd give us wisdom and revelation. I thank you for each and every believer in this place and watching online right now. You give them a revelation of who they are in Christ. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.